Hello everybody and welcome to our first free five-day challenge to eliminate stress. My name is Philip Gould. I'm a certified life coach and a neuro-linguistic programmer. And I'm here to help you eliminate stress from your life and have a life that is something that you can be very, very proud of. Okay? So this is day one of our challenge and let's get going okay so first let's tell you exactly what we're going to do so during these five days we're going to first define stress because as many people have many different definitions of stress on day two we're going to talk about the causes and effects and actually what happens with stress and both the physiological and the emotional on day three we're going to discuss how we can reduce stress through applying new principles in neuroscience and neuroplasticity. You know, our mind is capable of changing. We can rewire our thinking. On day four, we are going to create some very healthy coping mechanisms that enable you to plan and prepare and eliminate stress. And on day five, we're going to do reprogramming stress and changing the response of the events that previously have caused us stress into behavior that is empowering and value creating. Okay, so I know you're going to enjoy this five-day challenge. At the end of the challenge, you will receive a certificate of completion. Okay, now let's talk about the definition of stress. Okay, I'm going to move kind of quickly, but there will be homework assignment on each day. So first, psychology today says that stress refers to both the psychological perception of pressure and the body's response to it. So there is something in your mind that, you know, says, oh, this is stressful. But your body responds also. Your metabolism, your muscles, your memory. Some stress is necessary, of course. That's part of life. To warn us of some, you know, oncoming danger. But, and this is also known as the fight flight freeze syndrome or response, which has been with us for millions of years. In the Longman Dictionary, they describe stress as an event, such as a job, an experience, or a situation that is worrisome or pressureful or stressful, that makes us worry a lot, like moving into a new home. That's very stressful, and many other examples of stress, okay? The Cambridge Dictionary says that stress is a great worry caused by a difficult situation or something that causes this condition. People under a lot of stress may experience headaches, minor pain, sleeping disorders, and feelings of worry and unhappiness. Okay. In Google, they describe the physical actual um, kind of like architectural definition of stress as pressure or tension exerted on a material object like the steel frame of a building there's tension there's strain there's tightness okay the building might fall down if there's too much stress but in emotionally we can describe stress as a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances and this is like nervous tension caused by nervousness anxiety worry well, you don't know if you can handle it. Oh, my goodness, another deadline. Okay. So let's talk about some more examples. In the medical field, a very famous doctor at the University of California at Berkeley, Dr. Christina Maslock, who is a specialist in burnout for medical professionals, says that stress is emotional exhaustion. Okay. It's also called adrenal fatigue. Now, this is also called disconnection or depersonalization, which is referred to as compassion fatigue. Not only are you fatigued, but you don't care about other people. See, the stress has an effect on every aspect of your personality. And number three is the lack of autonomy. So you don't feel that you're in control of the situation, okay? Uh, you lose any real sense of meaning or accomplishment in your daily life because the stress kind of, you know, it throws you a curve. It gets you all confused and messed up. So stress can also result in burnout if there is chronic stress. 
And that's the, what we want to watch for, chronic stress. Now, my definition of stress is a little bit different because I believe it's something we can handle if we learn really what it is and how to handle it. To me, stress is a perception that is resulting from a self-created connection of an exterior event to a subjective expectation. So we have an event and then we create a relationship between that event and what we expect to happen. For example, let's say when you were a child, you were bitten by a dog. That's an exterior event. Now, you have created an expectation. Oh, every time I see a dog, he's going to bite me. Okay? That's your subjective expectation. You see? So, when you see the dog, you get the feeling that you're going to get bitten by the dog. Now, you created that connection between that event and your expectation of what's going to happen, okay? So, if there's any kind of harm or danger to that event, it's harm or danger that you created in your mind. It's not necessarily true that every time you see a dog, they're going to bite you. Actually, in my whole life, I've met millions of dogs. I've only been bitten once, and the, the dog only bit me because he was playing. He wasn't trying to harm me. Which is very, very playful, but it was a big dog and it's kind of vigorous the way he was playful. So, you know, this is what stress is. You take an event and then you take your perception of the event and throw it way out of proportion. Oh my goodness, a deadline. <gasps> my boss told me I have to finish this by tomorrow at 10. How am I going to do that? Oh, I'm going to be dead. I'll never do it. So you worry because you feel that you can't complete the task. Okay. This can cause you stress. But you have a choice. You can respond differently. You can say, wait a minute. It looks like I can't do it. But let me think. Maybe I can get someone to help me. Maybe I can do it. Let me try. And surprise. Lo and behold, you accomplished it. You finished by 6 in the morning, went home and slept for 3 hours, and still presented it to your boss at 10 with flying colors. So... Next time he gives you that, you'll say, I can handle it. See, no more stress. So stress is not an exterior event. It's your perception and response to the event. It is your subjective appraisal of the event's potential for harm or danger. And thus, stress is a thought. Okay, And thoughts are words. Words carry emotions. When I say thoughts are words, I'll give you an example. If I say to you, think of an elephant, you will immediately think of an elephant. Now, what if I don't know the word elephant? What if I think of a... And I send you a thought wave of an elephant from my mind. You won't catch it because there's no word attached to it. You won't know what I'm thinking. That's why I use the word elephant. Elephant, then you say, oh, immediately the elephant pops into your mind. Words carry emotions. Your choice of words will determine your emotion. This is bad. This is good. This is dangerous. This is harmful. This is helpful. This is risky. Emotions can cause stress. So choose your words very carefully. Here are some negative words. By, by the way, did you know that there are 600,000 words in the English language? If English is your first language, I bet you're surprised. I bet you don't know 600,000 words. <laughs> okay, none of us do, obviously. But there are many words that cause negative emotions. Abusive, excruciating, nauseating, rude, crazy, cramps, failure, anxious, exhausting. Yeah, you can use negative words, but they bring about negative emotions. You can change your words. Okay, so now we're going to go to our homework assignment for today. So exercise one is making a list. So what you're going to do, you're going to make a list of all the things that bother you and hold you back. Okay, so make a list on a piece of paper. It could be two or three pieces of paper. Maybe there's a hundred things that bother you. I don't know, maybe a thousand, whatever. Cross off with a pen all the words on that list, all the phrases. Number two, 
blacken them out with a very heavy black marker so you can't even see one little bit of the word. Next, number three, tear up the paper into little pieces. Number four, put all those little pieces of paper into an envelope. Number five, seal the envelope and then burn it or bury the envelope far away, deep in the ground. And then number six, say goodbye forever to those words and phrases and negative thoughts that you hold in reference to yourself or your feelings or your emotions, okay? That's part one. This is part two of the exercise. Make a list of the things you love, things that make you happy, that bring you pleasure, that make your life more valuable and more interesting. Write them very nicely and neatly on a piece of paper or two or three pieces of paper. Title this, Things That Make Me Happy. When you're finished with the list on the bottom, print your name and then sign your name and then staple them together. Fold them nicely and put them in a beautiful gold envelope in your desk and keep it there. Okay, that is your homework assignment for day one of our five-day challenge. I will see you tomorrow for day two, and we will see how you did on day one. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Bye-bye. This is Philip Gould signing off. See you tomorrow.